Good afternoon, and uh, welcome to this uh, early week prayer time for uh, Trinity United Methodist Church. It is a little after 1 p.m. actually on Tuesday the 19th, catching up a little bit from last week, but uh, we've got several people on our prayer list, some updates, some additions, and I uh, certainly want to share those with you uh, today. Let me begin with a, uh, a scripture verse. This is from the book of James, the New Testament book of James in chapter 5 and uh, verse 16. And here's what uh, James encourages us to do. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. In other words, working together um, to be as Christ-like as we can. The prayer of a righteous person, James says, is powerful and effective. And uh, so we want our prayers to be powerful and effective. And uh, that uh, seems to depend on, on how we live our lives. And uh, we want to live them, of course, in a righteous way, in a Christ-like way. Um, so uh, here are folks that are on our prayer list that need our prayers. So for months, several months, we were praying for um, a woman in the area who had had cancer and uh, who had had uh, quite a battle with cancer, but she lost that battle on the 15th of January, and that's uh, Brenda Bergman. And so I just want to lift up the Brenda Bergman family and be praying for them in the loss of Brenda. Uh, keep them in our prayers and uh, ask for God's comforting presence, of course, to be with them. Uh, Doug Kuhn, again, is also going through some um, rough days at home. He'd been actually in and out of the hospital a little bit lately, and, and uh, just prayers for Doug and for the uh, bone marrow transplant uh, to take hold and uh, for all that to start working. But prayers for he and Chris for this time. Uh, Had Johnson and for his heart. I hope to uh, hear an update on Had uh, pretty soon. Uh, Diana Jusen, we've been uh, praying for. She had uh, had COVID, of course, in the home that she's in outside of Janesville, as uh, several residents had there, and she recovered from that. Um, was uh, chatting with Will last week, and uh, Diana's recovered from that now, and feels like uh, she's uh, pretty happy where she's at and, and the progress she's made and so forth. And just so you guys know, we continue to pray for Diana Jusen and for Will. And I really want to lift up Will too. Um, his whole, their whole lives, but his whole life and his ministry and everything has kind of changed uh, with caring for um, Diana the way he is. And uh, well, their whole lives have just changed since the stroke. And so keep them in your prayers, if you would, please. Uh, pray for Will. They are able to keep in touch with each other electronically uh, every day, and that seems to be very good for both of them. Uh, but again, just keep them in your prayers for these days, if you would. Scott Wick also uh, needs our uh, continued prayers for his health. Uh, Alexis Foyt, uh, senior at Campbellsport, uh, had brain cancer and has gone through some treatments after surgery, and hopefully all that is going well as well. Uh, Aaron Zulke, a friend of Judy Lurch's, um, uh, needs a bone marrow transplant, and so we pray that that's all arranged. Uh, Joey Donald also has his up days and his down days. We've been praying for him. Of course, he stopped to help somebody on the highway, got hit by another car. He's got some surgeries to go through, but he also has a child on the way, and so they've got some good news uh, that they're expecting this baby, and uh, prayers for Joey and his wife and, and for the whole family uh, at this time as they kind of care for each other. Uh, Brian Neal also, uh, kind of a change of lifestyle and so forth with this Meniere's disease, so prayers for Brian. Uh, Ollie also, this friend of uh, uh, Tina um, Rollins and her mom uh, that lives over in England, uh, has a lot of family issues, of course, and threats from uh, the country that he came from, Iran, and uh, just prayers for him. Carrie Miller also, this friend of Tina Rambusik's, uh, needs a kidney transplant, and so prayers for her as well. Uh, for that to be arranged. Uh, folks, I'm going to ask you to please keep Scott McMurray in your prayers. Um, Scott's been a friend for a while. He's uh, retired, of course, outside of Milwaukee. I think it's Waukesha, something like that. But uh, went in, thought he had COVID, couldn't breathe, and discovered he had uh, cancer uh, in the throat and lung area. And um, uh, found out uh, most recently that uh, he is, uh, through his neck and through his lungs, he has got cancer that has spread. And so um, he was on a, had to go on a ventilator a couple of nights ago. Um, and he said that really helped and he felt better yesterday, but just continue to keep Scott in your prayers, if you will. Um, he is kind of by himself. He's got two kids, but they live out of the area. Um, and, uh, um, well, life's coming at him fast and, uh, and I know he would appreciate your prayers. 
Um, I am also adding uh, Connor Steers uh, to the prayer list. Uh, Connor is back to playing basketball after recovery from, uh, you know, knee operation or whatever a few months ago. And seemed to be doing well, but uh, maybe a small setback. Went to the doctor this last week and waiting to hear on that. But just prayers for Connor, that he can get back to his basketball career here and uh, that things will go well uh, this year for him. And then also, and folks, this is one of the hardest things uh, for me to do, uh, is to ask for prayers for myself. But I am asking for prayers for myself and for Jane at this time. I'm dealing with some health issues, uh, uh, not just one, uh, but a variety uh, that have uh, popped up in the last week or so. And so uh, we're waiting to uh, hear results and to do more tests and things like this. But uh, just pray for Jane and I. If you would, as we continue to try our, our best to watch over the congregation and to care for folks uh, in the congregation, uh, we're asking you to also care for us by uh, keeping us in your prayers, if you would. So we go through this time, and I'll keep you updated. Um, also, hope in all the care facilities. We uh, pray for that. Uh, those facilities that you will just be with the workers there and the residents, keep them in your care and in God's care. And uh, uh, frontline workers just all around. Um, as much as we'd like the virus to be gone and be done with it and not think about it anymore, um, it is not. And now is not the time to let down on our uh, precautions either. And you may not want to hear that, but I am telling you straight um, just got back from my doctor this week, and he still says he would not set foot in a restaurant in person and sit there and eat at this time, not until more of the vaccine is distributed. We've been very careful. We've been fortunate. Uh, we haven't had too many deaths in our congregation uh, from COVID. We don't want to have more, and we want to protect those most vulnerable uh, who are there with us and so forth. Uh, for these winter months, it's very hard. Once it warms up a little bit in March, we'll be back to uh, outside worship and then of course, trying to get inside as soon as we uh, possibly can, as soon as the numbers come down. And I am in touch regularly with the county health department and uh, asking them, is it time yet? Is it time yet? And the last couple times, not quite, not quite. Here's the numbers you need to watch. You know, when these go down for two weeks, uh, then you can think about opening up and so forth. Uh, I, I realize this is not what everybody is doing, but uh, we are not everybody and everybody is not right. And I'm not sure everybody's being responsible during this time. But for those who've had bad cases of COVID or have lost loved ones, uh, let me tell you, um, uh, these guidelines are, are for our own good and so forth. And, and we will continue to watch out for everybody. Uh, this is our uh, Christian uh, duty uh, to do this, to watch over one another in love. I know everybody's getting uh, uh, short uh, with patience and so forth. Uh, but again, now is not the time to do that. Yeah, we can wait. We've waited this long. We can wait just a little longer and come together in person uh, slowly and uh, safely uh, if we will just um, uh, listen to those who are uh, guiding us medically and uh, know what they're doing. Now, now let me let me address something here at the end of this prayer concern or prayer concerns in this prayer time. Um, and, and I want to remind you, uh, we have experienced uh, as a staff uh, folks who we never dreamt uh, would act the way they're acting these days, but we've got some who are not acting very Christ-like, and we want to make sure that we encourage everyone to continue to act Christ-like, even if we don't like what's going on, even if we don't agree with it. Uh, those that we're dealing with are brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, you know, forgive us if we're making mistakes. We'd rather err on the side of caution. But uh, Peter uh, encourages us in uh, 1 Peter 4, 9. He says, be hospitable to one another without complaining. That is a word that we need to hear today because these are long months and we've been at this a long time um, and we'll be at it a little longer. Um, but uh, Hebrews 24, the writer of Hebrews uh, 10, 24 also says this. And let us watch out for one another to provoke love, nothing else, love and good works. Um, that's the attitude that we need to have with Christ in our hearts and, and uh, acting uh, Christ-like toward one another. Let's watch over one another in love. That's a Methodist thing also. It has been for years. Uh, but let's watch over one another in love. Let's care for one another and hang in there just a little while longer and things will come together. 
And when they come together and when we open up the church, even a small amount and allow a few people in to worship together, it'll be a day of rejoicing. And I look forward to that with you. Uh, if you want a list of things that I haven't been able to do over the last year um, because of this pandemic, um, I'd be happy to share that list with you sometime. But uh, yours truly is frustrated as well. And uh, I'm afraid the frustration has also taken its toll on me physically. But um, we need to do this together. We need to hang in there together. And uh, we need to uh, watch over one another in love uh, without complaining and continue to support one another through this time. Thank you for joining us for this time of prayer. Um, please know I'm, I'm not getting on to everybody. I'm just saying here's the way it is. And I know people are losing patience. But let's not forget who we are and whose we are and how we need to treat one another and support one another uh, at this time. Let's close now acknowledging who God is in our lives, remembering all that Christ has done for us to give us this life that we have in him, and uh, remembering one another in love as we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Would you join me? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining us for our prayer time today. We'll look forward to next week as well. Um, you take care and know that you're in my prayers for this week. God bless.